श्री श्री राधा गोपीनाथ जी की जय श्री श्री कृष्ण बलराम की जय गौर भक्त वृंद की जय गौर प्रमानंद हरे 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 गौर सो प्रणाम टू ऑल वेलकम गुड गुड इवनिंग and uh, <clears throat> here we are today we are sharing these last two meetings here we have been discussing brahma stuti some section of it two verses from the prayers of sri brahma and today we have chosen one last meeting here about basically istagosti which refers to 
questions and answers, very classical way of uh, acquiring knowledge as, as it has been presented in our tradition. You pay attention to the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, basically you find questions and answers. Arjuna and Krishna, Parikshit Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami, in the bottom there are so many. Istagosti, so many conversations, Vidura, Maitreya, Brahma, Krishna, and so on. Chaitanya Charitamrita, you have Ramananda Sambad. Sambad means conversation, basically. As we, as you may have heard, there are different types of conversation, Bada, Jalpa, and Bitanda. So Jalpa and Bitanda are so-called conversations <laughs> in which the two parts are not that concerned with truth, but actually are concerned with being right basically defeating the other, and this type of ulterior motives. Still, there is not that much of a deep commitment to truth itself. Mm-hmm. But bada means a real dialogue, real conversation, which means I have the willingness and disposition to, to be defeated by truth. I and mean, that will be success. That's real conversation. Conversation is before we open... Or much like, I already know what to tell you and what not to accept from you and how I should do. No, it's however and whatever truth may, however truth wants to manifest, <laughs> I pray to be willing to be uh, possessed and defeated by that. Defeated, quote unquote. That's why as I like to say, we always say per, per day, at least 108 times, ki jai. You know? Jai, jai, ki jai, jai, ki jai, ki jai, ki jai. <laughs> That's not just a, automatic replay of, of, of okay whenever I say key I have to say jai <laughs> but actually it really means all victory for whatever Sri Lagrude the may all of them triumph triumph yeah. triumph of on me that that will be my success again even as paradoxical as it may sound our ultimate su- success is being defeated by truth <laughs> Because still we carry so many misconceptions. No? I mean, we should be humble enough to, to acknowledge that as, as, as sadakas as we may be and as glorious as is, is, is our contact with bhakti, we shouldn't be as bold enough as to think that I have no prejudice, no misconception. So the humility of a Vaishnav that characterizes a Vaishnav for who he, she is, is I'm always ready to, for further learning. I'm always ready for for discovering a new layer of reality. I, I don't want, as I like to say, to take Krishna consciousness for granted. I don't want to fall into that uh, mortal mistake, if you will. You know, like th- thinking, I already know what this is about. From A to Z, I can tell you all that. I mean, the disposition of a progressive Vaishnava is... I may know something by the grace of Guru and Vaishnavas, but... I mean. It's much more what we don't know than what we know. <laughs> of course, I'm not speaking here about just knowing things. <laughs> Real knowing comes is in the heart, but how much do we know from the heart either? No? So we have to remain. And, and the more you know from your heart, the more you realize, I mean, there's no limit to how much I can, how much can be further discovered. That, that's a real symptom of someone who is getting closer to the infinite, as Sila Siddhar Maharaj will say. You get closer to the infinite, you will realize there is no limit for progress. So you can imagine someone who is really having an experience of that will never say, I'm almost having the whole infinite in my fist or something like that. I'm, he will realize, she will realize, mm-hmm. I'm just touching one point in one infinite line. And that's overwhelming. That single point is... <laughs> But I will never think this is all. This is it. There's no limit. As we were sharing yesterday, how this eternal play, Lila of Sri Krishna and Vrindavan, is unfolding constantly with nuances and, and new things and new games and new experiences. And that's the very definition of the word anurag, which is one of the developments of divine love. And we have to understand what's divine love and the implications of divine love and the further. Uh, developments and anurag means the, by having that type of love at every moment the experience is newer and newer so you will never say I already did that this thing, I already felt this stuff Krishna we already played that game oh, oh, today again doing the same thing 
but that's too boring. <laughs> it's never the same. <laughs> but you have to be willing for entering into a dynamics that it's never the same. So, so it's agnostic. Going back to my point, is this type of conversation, this type of dialogue with for the two sides, not, not only me. You are doing minimum fifty percent of the equation is your contribution. <laughs> minimum, hopefully more. I don't think I, I may be able to. To, to have 50% to contribute, so please invest more. <laughs> and, and that will, will create these dynamics of, of, of continuous traumat car or of continuous exper experience of astonishment. Oh, I heard like Mahaprabhu here in the Bhagavad, and oh, I heard Pralat Charit, but now I'm hearing it for a second time. Oh, it's, it is like I've never heard that before. It's the first time I'm hearing Prahlad Charit. And then, then third time, ooh. First, this, and, and like this, Mahaprabhu will hear the same quote-unquote section a hundred times. <laughs> and he was not boring, bored, sorry. And the other pundit who was giving the lecture was not bored either. It's not that he was saying to Mahaprabhu, you are requesting to speak again the same thing for a hundredth time. I'm bored to death. Let's go to, let's jump to the 10th canto or whatever. None of the two were complaining. And the speaker and the hearer were like, let's go again to the same section. Let's go again to the same. Because why? Because it's never the same, actually. <laughs> it's never the same. So that's the nature of the Bhagavad, and that's the nature of Sri Harinam. That's the nature of, of every single aspect in Krishna consciousness. But of course, we have to be uh, aligned to that reality. And so it's Tagosti tries to create in the words of my Guru Maharaj that type of teachable moment where all of us try to enter into the area of epiphany, where we are trying to have this type of glimpses of, oh, well, there is no end to this discussion, basically. Kirtaniya Sadahari, there is place for eternal Harikata, eternal Kirtan. There, there is a corresponding place where these things are going on eternally without interruption. Hai Tuki Apratihata. <laughs> there's no interruption to that flow I mean here we, ha we are having glimpses of that but still some interruptions are there not that anyone to blame outside of us but just we ourselves sometimes become our worst enemies <laughs> so but in, the, in that level no, there are no enemies in any sense of the term so gradually trying to get closer there so that's we are praying for for some little glimpse some little epiphany that may nourish our hope and faith in, in that direction. So I don't know. There are any questions, there are any topics, any things, but there are one question that was waiting from the other day. If that still remains. It does still remain. So we'll we will still, we may start with that one. You said at the end, you said, well, if you can remember that, <laughs> I just remembered that uh Mikey Ross had said something about the journey of, of Uddhava, when he went from, you know, where he was in Dwarka, and mm -hmm. he, Krishna sent him in Dhaban and, and he transformed him, you know. And then I said, well, you know, we're starting from minus zero, and now where, how do we find our, where do we find ourselves in our own journey? Mm -hmm. that, I think that was the question. I, maybe somebody here remembers it better than I do. Do you remember what? I think that was the. That was yeah, the that's the gist of the question. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, hmm. it's um, there. There's so much to to learn. Like, like uh, in Bhagavatam class this morning, as uh, the topic was. Brahmaji and, and how he he read the Vedas three times so that he could make sure that he he got it, you know, and and uh, so, you know, it's like all of us. I mean, we have some very uh, high IQ people and just some people that are just like, you know, we can read. You know? So we all have our, I guess. Um, our, 
particular relationship with Krishna and the whole philosophy. So, um, how to how to find how to, I guess basically how do I find my place in it? Mm -hmm. Be my basic deepest question. You know, mm -hmm. I've been chanting Hare Krishna since 1970. You know, and I'm still feeling like I haven't passed go yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he was wondering to how we, let's not live about transformed, but what he heard, how are we at our stage getting transformed? Are we having a transformation like we ever had? Maybe not that level. Yeah. Uh, go along. Or how can we have a transformation? You know, what, yeah. mm. what, is, what is our opportunity for transformation? Mm. Well, yeah. Thank you, you for, you for the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, the very identity of who we are we are Tatasta Jiva. Basically, the, the very definition of Tatasta means opportunity for transformation <laughs> in the sense of Tatasta means that according to the particular environment you are associating with, you will be influenced by that. Mm -hmm. So that speaks about the potential for transformation. If we uh, expose ourselves to certain specific influences, in this mm -hmm. case, bhakti, devotional influences, that will create an epiphany. I mean, I'm sure on some level or another, all of us have gone through something of that. If not, we wouldn't be here today. I hope nobody paid to you to come to the class. On that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my point is, at the end of the day, and, and continue with the example of Uda, I mean, his transformation was in the association of the Rajavasis. No? He exposed himself to a particular Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, and he was transformed. He had an epiphany. And he was Uddhava. He was not Bhakta George, if you will. <laughs> but nonetheless, he showed, even if you are someone like Uddhava, there is place for epiphany. There is place for upgrading. So even if we are whatever, how, however you may like to conceive that senior devotees, or of course, we shouldn't feel think of ourselves as such. <laughs> And if one may think, okay, I have been practicing for that many years. I mean, the more we are practicing and the more senior we are, as I said before, the more we should be willing or realizing the prospect for further transformation. No? That, that should be a, a case. No? It's, it's not that we should feel, I'm already chanting for 50 years, so I don't need to get that much transforming longer or to learn that much. The contrary. So, so I will emphasize this point, uh, exposure to, to, to different to, to sadhus that may transform our hearts. I mean, Srila Siddhar Maharaj once described the guru as our own potential appearing in front of us. Hmm. I really like that definition. In other words, guru, and with guru, I don't mean diksha guru, the guru principle in general, taking one, one form or another, a real sadhu, if there's a real sadhu and there's real openness and willingness, there will be some combination between these two sides. So we will perceive in front of certain persons, oh, all that I can be is being reflected in that particular personality. I'm seeing my own prospect in he or she, whoever it may be. I'm not pointing to anyone in particular. <laughs> I'm not promoting some sadhu or, or another. I'm just establishing the general principle that real sadhu sangha is a transformational experience technically speaking sadhu sangha is not just like a social gathering like hello how are you nice okay did you see the news yesterday okay more halava please okay see you tomorrow bye that's not sadhu sangha sadhu sangha has to be transformative has to be in pursuit of truth so we we should look for that srila rupa goswami when he speaks about Sadhu Sangha in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he mentions three elements of Sadhu Sangha. Swajatya, Swatavara, and Snigdasya. So we say Sadhu Sangha has to be performing an affectionate environment. There has to be affection. It's not just like imposed thing, associate with him, reveal me your mind, Prabhu. Or <laughs> it has to be has to be a flow of affection, confidence. Uh, Swajatya, it has to be done between people of the same nature. 
You have to feel, okay, we are speaking the same language. We are part of the same species here because there can be different natures among Vaishnavas as well. So we need to find a place where we feel we, we fit according to who we are and who we can be. And Swatavara, which means we have to associate with devotees who are higher than us. That's very important. And sometimes we forget that. And we just, again, the notion of Sadhu Sangha dilutes to the point of just sharing on just on certain level more. I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying everyone is doing that, but I've seen that sometimes. And the tendency maybe in all of us, we have to be careful of that. That Sadhu Sangha doesn't become a place of complacency, basically. No, we're, we're just, it's just like a social circle where everyone is looking for validation <laughs> in one way or another, no? for my daily dose of kijais <laughs> or whatever. No? But Sadhu Sangha has to be, a <clears throat> again, epiphany, transformational experience, and transformation won't happen in the comfort zone, as I like to say. You have to be taken out of the comfort zone, and then real learning can happen. That's the role of the guru. Guru won't keep the disciple in the comfort zone. Guru will challenge the disciple by his her instructions, words. Uh, and the disciple is someone who is willing to do that also, to be taken out of the comfort zone. <laughs> Again, in an affectionate way, snigdasya, in a certain intimacy, with certain intimacy. But, but it's important that these very foundational, preliminary notions are in place because if that's not accepted, we cannot continue the conversation, basically. Mm -hmm. because, so it's important that we, I'll, I'll ask myself, like sometimes people will ask, so who is my guru? Where is my guru? Uh, I've been searching, but I cannot find him or her, whatever. And the question is, have you asked where, where, I, where is the disciple first? Before, where I am as a disciple? In other words, am I willing to do all that it, takes to be a disciple? Do I know what's expected from a disciple? <laughs> because if I have no clue about that and I'm looking for a guru, probably I, I will never find him, although it's here. <laughs> because the disciple has not yet arrived. So, so these things are, are a way of, of trying to... And again, this is not a black and white thing. It's not like you are disciple, you are not disciple. There are so many levels of discipleship no, <laughs> we can begin with some degree of that, but that has to be matured and, and upgraded in time. All of us, no, no exception, uh, as a natural thing, not as a, again as a imposition, superficial imposition. Sila Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is not a superficial imposition. <laughs> so, so it's important to to find. I mean, to find ourselves first. We have to find someone who reflects all that we can be. That's the best way to find ourselves. Find someone who reflects your potential. Not, we cannot just find ourselves by looking at ourselves. That, that's not the, the, the method. It's not just look inside and find yourself in every sense of the term. No. Why over and over again Shastra is emphasizing having Sri Guru, Diksha Guru, Siksha Guru, Sadhu Sangha, over and over and over again as the birthplace of bhakti. So, so that's an important point. And, and, and again, it's, we have to know how to play out the implications of that. So sadhu sangha means I expose myself to certain personalities who touch my heart in, in, in relation to whom I see myself in all that I can be. You know, I see those sadhus and I feel Oh, I would like to be that. Not like imitating them, but just like, oh, I feel attracted towards where they are. Even though I don't have a clue where they are, <laughs> it's not clear for me, but somehow that's attractive to me. I don't understand even everything they're saying, but I want to go there. Like I remember once <laughs> I was giving one lecture in Argentina and it was more introductory lecture. I mean, at least I thought I was giving an introductory lecture. <laughs> And the audience were mostly yoga students. So after the class, I asked their teacher, who was who is a devotee, like how was the class for them? I mean, was it okay? What do you think? You know them better than me. 
And, and she told me something very funny. She told me, but very, very interesting. She told me, I look at their faces, Maharaj, she told me, and their, their expression was, I don't understand anything, but please do not stop. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a, a good way of putting what's the epiphany we have in front of. I mean, I, I don't want to put myself as a sadhu there, but somehow uh, th th what she said corresponded with the, with the experience that we should have in front of a real sadhu, <laughs> which is sometimes I may feel this is way beyond my head, and I cannot fully, I am not sure if I'm grasping everything, but there's something that is telling me, continue, don't stop. And I want to be there and I want to go there. <laughs> it's not that I want to copy that person, but I feel at attracted to follow that person. Mm -hmm. Like Uddhava, he, when he saw the level of devotion of the Vajvasi, it was like, that was transformational. For yeah. Him. yeah. So if we see... You know, devotees doing service, and you know, it's uh, it's something to aspire for. You know, when you can see that, oh, the, the devotee is like, um, you know, uh, not so under the, the modes of material nature. You know, they they're kind of rising above and mm -hmm. wow, that that. That's um, exciting, you know. Mm -hmm. No, no one wants to be oppressed by the modes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody here does. But yeah. yeah. And on top but, of yeah, and on top of that, I will say when we we can have a glimpse of the positive attraction that those devotees are having towards serving Guru Krishna, because of course it's not only about getting freed from the modes. That's just like a a byproduct of bhakti. Mm -hmm. I get the point, of course. On one level, we may really need to be free from the modes, and that becomes like our goal. <laughs> but at one point, we will realize, in comparison to what's actually the goal of bhakti, getting free from the modes is almost like a joke. I mean, I mean, I'm, I don't want to downplay that, but in one, at one point of our progress, that's no longer a concern. That will be just like the natural consequence of absorbing in bhakti. Because you became so much absorbed in the near gun play, playing, you know, in the playing bef beyond the modes, that at one point the modes are no longer operative, and you forgot some, that there's something called the modes of nature, basically, <laughs> because there you are tied by another, another rope, not the gunas, but the rope of, of affection. And Krishna is tied by that rope as well, as we spoke yesterday. So yeah, we need we need at the end of the day we need to. To, to discover, I mean, if we are really longing for, for that change and progress, which I, of course, value that you express that honestly, that, that's, that's a great, that's half the, the way already to, be, to have the, <laughs> the courage of expressing, I, mean, I want change, I want to progress, and I, I, f I feel the need to, to grow. I mean, that, that, that's, that's a lot, because sometimes we may not be willing to acknowledge that <laughs> although we all know that that's how it works so but yeah at the end of the day is finding <clears throat> those personalities that will embody our ideal basically huh? our ideal of love for krishna our idea of, of pure devotion personified we need that so the process becomes real no? our goal is prem but what's prem no, we can say divine love or these things that what's 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 our experience of that if we have if we if we are not there our experience will be proximity to those who are there <laughs> and even if we are not there to be close to those who are there that's already an experience into itself no? i mean someone has prem i don't have prem but i get closer to those who have the experience of prem i may not have the experience of prem but I will have the experience of someone who has the experience of Prem, which is an, a whole experience unto itself. And probably that's what I need to have eventually the experience of Prem. <laughs> we have to begin somewhere. And, and, and that's, that's the very idea of Sadhu Sangha. That, that Sadhu or Sadhvi will have a particular emotional disposition for Krishna, and that eventually becomes contagious 
and we will find ourselves affected by that somehow or other and wanting to make the necessary changes we have to do in our lives because we feel a commitment with that person, natural and not forced, natural. I feel so inspired by that particular person or those particular personalities that I, I, I'm empowered by their example <laughs> and I end up doing things that I could never have thought I will be able to do and I can change things by their empowerment, by their inspiration and of course my effort that comes by their inspiration <laughs> because sometimes if we don't have, are not enough inspired we may not be willing to do that much sacrifice or effort because we don't find that much purpose for that. But if you feel that you are like flooded <laughs> with inspiration, real, real experiences of that, oh, so much willingness in that direction. So the question is not forcing ourselves to, to have, how do I make more effort and sacrifice more, but how do I find those personalities that will touch me in such a way that will set me on fire basically <laughs> and ha having the willingness to to be set on fire for sure <laughs> because of course we have to be open for the flame to be kindled you no know? that's that's what the has the potential to be activated you no know? so, so the two sides has to be there again because the saddle may be there but we are not there and 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 if you and the most important thing is that we are there because even if the sad is not there <laughs> But you are in the proper place, longing for that. Naturally, that will attract that particular association sooner or later. We, we should have full uh, conviction and that that will happen. I mean, Krishna is not that cruel. No. <laughs> if you really want that, I mean, why he will not bestow that? No. I mean, that's the thing that he would like to give more than any other thing. So if someone is really longing for that, and we shouldn't doubt that Krishna will make all the necessary arrangements for that to happen. Um, and look attentively. And if that's happening, we have to do our part. And, and of course, again, some challenges may be there. We may be invited to go beyond certain preconceptions we may be carrying or certain whatever, prejudices or fears, because that's also getting close to a sadhu. It's, it's like entering fire, basically. You know? So we may not be able to immediately jump into the fire, we may be reduced to ashes, but if we get too too far, we won't be cooked enough either. And we'll end up raw. So we don't want to be raw. We are already tasting ourselves as raw substance and it doesn't taste that good. So we need to, to be cooked so we become fit to be offered <laughs> to Krishna to Radha I mean, in, here in Alaska, there's such a, a well, you know, uh, see going going to the temple or, or seeing the, the different activities of the devotees it, it's very um, um, uh, it's something to aspire for you know you see like uh, the deity worship or anybody's deity worship you know it, it, it's very um, uh, it's enlightening to, to me to see it you know I can see wow this person is they, they, They've, uh, they've got something, you know. Mm -hmm. so it's it's very very nice. So I uh, I just I've read a little bit, first couple chapters of your book, and I, I was just seeing like uh, this is the last thing I'm going to say. It's like that that momentary association with. You're a fast reader. Huh? Fast reader. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Just, I, I keep, I, I always remember back uh, when I was in, um, when I was in San Diego, you know, and, um, and it, I, I didn't get a see it, chance to see Prabhupada in San Diego, but I, the, the devotees had posted pictures <clears throat> of Prabhupada when he went to uh, this stadium there, it was a, it was a football stadium, Balboa Stadium, the big program. Somewhere or other, I missed that, but but I I I constantly remember the fact that just just that you know few moments of association of seeing Prabhupada that after from that point on um, all of my material designs just 
they, they end it. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's an example of, of association. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. um, so at a, at, on a, another level, just being being with devotees, you know, and just seeing their individual devotional activities. And then going back to the original thing of Buddha going to Vrindavan, you know, there, wow. So we have that opportunity. And, yeah. And so yeah. I yeah, we, should, that. we should take advantage of Sadhu Sangha. But of, of course, I will say that there are, again, the degrees of Sadhu Sangha. So there is a more, if you will, generic appreciation of Sadhu Sangha. And it's good that we appreciate every devotee, what they do, their service, their sincerity. Yeah. Also, it's nice to, I mean, at least in one way or another, to have a specific relationship and commitment with certain sadhus yeah. through which we learn and we serve and we inquire and we feel that specific connection, be it Srila Prabhupada and whoever one feels that connection with. Because, it, I mean, bhakti requires a specificity. No? I mean, we appreciate all Vaishnavas, <laughs> but also we try to, there is some specific commitment in connection with with certain sadhus that will especially like, yeah. how do you say like? Well, <laughs> the Spanish flower. war is coming in my word, not the wow. English one. Flower, blossom. Uh, among many, one will. Rise. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah thank <laughs> you. <laughs> They're being too poetic, <laughs> and blossoming. And it's okay. <laughs> so, then, so, so then the the, the the always the question is 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 how do we um, be? How how can we be selective and be certain that what we're getting is is valid and truthful and, and uh, appropriate? You know, following Guru Shastra Sadhu. You know, because there is that that whole element of you know, there's there's controversies and different things that I don't really I stay as far away from them as I can, you know, but I'm I'm also very careful you know, mm -hmm. about where where I uh, take my attention. So yeah. you know that that's always the you know an, an issue. Yeah of course we have to exercise caution. <laughs> It's not that we have just to be naive and let's go every, everywhere and let's... I mean, in the beginning, that's more the mentality, you know? Let's let's go everywhere. It's okay. Everyone is devotee. And it's, and it's true. But in time, you realize, okay, there are differences of mood and opinion and adhikar. And, and you become a little selective, not don't playing anyone, just, as I mentioned, Swajatiya, Rupa Goswami said, you try to associate who, with those who share similar mood which means not everyone will enter into that group and it's not that you're being offensive or anything so one has to pay attention like what do i need in which stage i am that requires certain introspection what 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 would i what do i feel i'm lacking and and, and realizing the things you start to to pay attention and to to be open about that and to see where do i find that and and also again one should be willing to how to say, to accept whatever Krishna wants to manifest that and it may be not in the place that I'm expecting <laughs> or in the form I am expecting. So many preconceptions we may have, you know, okay, it has to be from an Indian guy or whatever, man, not woman, woman, not man, old, not young. But as I said the other day, you know, Pariksit Maharaj was looking for his guru and he didn't have, he was not thinking my guru will be only a 16-year-old boy that has to appear naked. <laughs> I don't think you have that type of preconception before when we're looking for a guru. But that was his guru. Of course, that was the external packaging. He went beyond that and realized, oh, this here is guru there. So, I mean, we, we should take time. Of course, it's not that I'm promoting that you just surrender to a person after a weekend or something. Sanatan Goswami himself is suggesting you take your time, get to know the person, get to know yourself, and be takes time. But we have to follow in a just to judge the tree by its fruits. 
if you feel some genuine inspiration that is undeniable in your heart, because, I mean, when, when epiphany is coming, that goes way beyond all the mental calculation and all things that we may be like, let's see, I have to hear from here, not from this, this person I've heard, this is whatever. It's okay, I'm not saying that, but in certain moments, you will have an experience that totally transpasses all those filters and you feel like, oh my God, what's going on here? <laughs> and you cannot deny, you cannot just like, no, no, this is not happening. And Krishna say, why not? You wanted that, it's happening. <laughs> no? And it may happen again in, in a direction that you are not expecting or yes, or, or the direction you may expect, whatever the case, it's not, that's secondary. My point is if you're really looking for that thing, for that experience, you won't be putting conditions how that should happen in which way. I mean, that's that's secondary. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Amatik Priyatam Jadi Kutopi Labyati. Chaitanya Srila Rupa Goswami said, this is a famous verse that Srila Prabhupada said. I took from this verse the inspiration to name my society, Society for Krishna Consciousness. So this is a verse from Rupa Goswami's Padiavali where he's describing Bhakti Rasa or the experience of Bhakti Rasa in, in Raganuga Bhakti. And he's saying, <clears throat> basically, whatever you find that, in whatever, whatever, and whatever, and how, whenever you find that, take it. Like implying, he's not mentioning only if it comes in this particular packaging from this particular person, you can take it. If you are really looking for that, I mean, that's, and, and he then says, Tatra laulem apie kalam molyam. Laulem, no, greed is the, the currency through which you can obtain this. The ultimate gift of Krishna consciousness can be only obtained through spiritual greed. And greed means if you are really greedy, and you're really greedy, <laughs> and, and that thing that you are greedy for appears, you won't start to ask, uh, but let me see if it's comfy in the packaging that I like. I mean, if you are greedy and that's coming, you will just jump on that. No second thought. So, <laughs> so of course, we, we should be educated enough as to know what is expected to hear from a sadhu. I mean, we should not be that naive. Of course, the sadhu is saying, if a person is saying some weird stuff, you should, we should be educated enough to realize this is not what I should be hearing from a sadhu. But if what a sadhu is telling us really comes in the context of revelation and is backed by Shastra, because that's how a sadhu should speak, it's on the basis of Shastra, and that's touching our hearts. And we give some time, and in time we realize that's still touching my heart, because you can put yourself to test. Now let's see if it, this is not just one crazy experience I had only the other day. I realize no, the more I expose myself to this, it, it further confirms. So, I mean, Krishna Himself is is showing that again. Some degree of caution has to be there, but at the end of the day, we have to judge the. the, the by its fruits and results. If we are feeling inspired in Krishna consciousness. That's the most important thing. You know? Like, like when I, someone asked Srila Siddhar Maharaj, as, as you know, some of you may know, who is the most important guru? Diksha guru, Siksha guru. I think I told you that the other day we were speaking. And he said, the most important mm -hmm. guru is the one who is helping you the most. And you have to, to have that thermometer <laughs> with you. <laughs> No. And with this, I'm not saying oh, he's best, he's worse, not, not in that type of putting labels, but who is helping you the most? Because guru is not, I mean, gurus are not just like guys competing with one another to see who is best, who has more disciples, or who inspires more people. <laughs> real guru, real guru, are all working for the same cause. There's one famous, famous talk by Prabhupada on Guru Tattva, on Guru... And the first verse, first thing he says, Guru is one. And he elaborates on that idea of the, of the unity in the principle. He appears as many individuals, but in principle, it's one. All of them are serving, root, putting, pouring water in the same root. They are serving the same cause. They're not ones against each other. So if the Guru is bona fide, whatever the, that sadhu may be, they're all working for the same cause. And trying to nourish strata in bhakti, whatever it takes. So it's not like, again, a competition. It's not like, okay, you have to be inspired by me and not by that sadhu. 
because I want you to be inspired by me. I mean, that's, that's nonsense. If you are genuinely inspired in that direction, we will be celebrating that. <laughs> it's not that we are expecting everyone should be inspired by my particular mood. That won't happen. Even in Golok Vrindavan, it's not that everyone is inspired with the same thing. <laughs> I mean, just show us inspired thinking Krishna will have nice rest all night. And gopis are inspired by thinking Krishna won't have a, mo a moment of sleep, sleep in the whole night. And we will dance Rasa Lila with us. <laughs> So there is differences of opinion, even in the spiritual world. <laughs> but this is somehow harmonized. It's not conflict. No? So there's, if we feel, as you mentioned, controversy, the controversy sometimes means just we need further dialogue to harmonize something we do not agree with. But disagreement doesn't mean something bad. It's, disagreement means an invitation to, for dialogue. And even if we will continue disagreeing, we can agree that we disagree and still love each other it's no problem it's not that we have to agree in everything that's so boring I imagine if we start to know each other and all of us think the same feel the same agree with the same it's like i will become desperate i will jump the window or something you know, let me get out of here i will run from a latch as soon as i can everyone thinking the same thing oh i need some some diversity spice of life you hear that you know i, I feel like i <laughs> dominated too much here in my questions. I know there were so many other questions and thoughts. And, I, I, and that really was, you know, a journey of Buddha that really took me over. Okay. So I appreciate that. Yeah. But Without key. No yeah. Else <laughs> to, uh, okay. You know, please. Who we'll raised the hand up? Okay. Uh, and, um, before I say my question, there's yes. a couple of things that came up as you were talking. Yeah. One was what Sukadev was swimming when he entered. I remember in one of the purpose Prabhupada talks about that same idea of not judging the external packaging when, about who to hear from. But he said it's from who you, you have to hear from, don't judge by what they look like or any external but what effect does when you but you have to hear from them or what effect does that hearing have on you? Mm -hmm. And then there's that verse about how do you know if you're hearing properly that it's like, how do you know if you're eating properly? Your hunger goes away. You're satisfied. And like you said, yeah. no, it doesn't matter what anybody says, you know huh. this is right. <laughs> and it's like when we all join Krishna consciousness, it doesn't matter what anybody said, you, there's a place in you to just knew this is right. <laughs> and then when you talk about the yoga students, their faces showed that they didn't understand anything, but they didn't want it to stop. So many devotees have said they had that experience with Prabhupada. They didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just wanted to be with him and keep hearing. What means they understood something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, enough. <laughs> so my question, and I, mm. I've been finding that I want to understand better what is soul. What is a soul? Like, what am I when I say I am? A spirit soul, hmm. um, meaning okay. I um, yeah, yeah. What yeah? What is the soul? What is the soul before it has its identity, its specific identity and its specific form? And what and is the soul? And is the soul doing anything? Especially for somebody who is practicing the the part of bhakti, is the soul? What's the soul doing? Is it doing anything? Is it acting? And the reason this comes up for me is like if I'm if my mind throws up some disturbing feelings about something petty and insignificant, my tendency is to say, I'm, um, this is not me. This is my material mind, my false ego, my false personality reacting here. This is not me. I'm a being separate from the mind and the ego. I'm a spirit soul. And in that moment, I go, well, what is that exactly? Hmm. And that's okay. I've heard from Sadhus and Shastra that I am, that means I am a minute but powerful spark of spiritual energy who is a person who's conscious who's has senses but i'm also hearing that but i don't have a specific identity or form yet so like how does that work that you're a person with senses but you don't have a form and somehow i seem to need to conceive of what i am now at this stage just to help with Detaching from the material mind and what's ego and is that is the soul doing anything? 
Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, well, I should say, you know, maybe this is a question that's not askable. Like, I don't know. Every, you know, yeah. back, you know Taco says about the Jeep, and you ask asking too many questions about Jeep, you told this person, don't keep asking too many more questions. You just have to practice your and, and, and This was your was first good. question, so now I cannot <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that is a very valid question. Thanks for asking. So, yeah, of course, I, I, I don't want like to sound that I'm sending you to do homework, but I, in my book that I know you got it, I speak on that and mostly in chapter seven, <clears throat> where I'm quoting the famous verse: "Jibera Sarvahai Krishna Danitya Das Krishna Tatastha Shakti Veda Veda Prakash." which somehow describes the identity of, of the soul in a, in a general way as eternal, possessing eternal, what in Sanskrit may be called dasatva, or um, a, a relation of dependence with Krishna, basically. So all souls have that connection with Krishna, with, with our, our source. We are dependents. We are servants of Krishna in that sense. We all depend on him. He's our source. So the point is that when we say, well, there are basically two questions. Do this, does the soul act? I mean, there are many other questions, but mainly. Yeah, the soul has capacity for action. Kartritwe, that's mentioned by Srila Jiva Goswami in Paramatma Sandarbha. He enumerates, if I'm not mistaken, 21 qualities of the, of the Jiva, of the, of the Atma. And one of them is that we have the... We, we can act, basically. Now, of course, sometimes we may hear, and that is also important to understand, <laughs> sometimes scripture will say, I don't know, we don't have body, we don't have senses, but it's referring to we don't have those things in a material sense. Or sometimes we may hear soul is not acting, and that will refer in, to the sense of action that we experience in this world, that we will feel, okay, I am the whatever, no? The very idea of hankar means ahankara, I do. And it's, that's what we call false ego. So we may think, okay, false ego means the idea that I do, but it's false ego. So then that it means that then I, don't, I do not do in my real ego. No, no, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> it just doesn't mean that, it just that it only means that in our conditioned state, we have a false sense of doership in the sense of we feel we are the center and everyone, everything revolves around us and we are identified, of course, with body, mind, sense, complex, and we think that's who we are. And on that basis, that's false. That's not us. So who we are, of course, in, 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 ter in general terms, we can say we are a soul. But Krishna himself had this I don't want to say difficulty, but he made this point in chapter two of the Gita when he started to describe Arjuna, what's the soul? And if you remember, mostly everything that he says is in, in negative terms, what the soul is not. Because it's so difficult to say what's the soul in the sense that the soul is something totally, consciousness is beyond material experience. And if we have only had mostly material experiences till now, how can I describe to you something that goes beyond what you have experienced till now? Because generally when I describe to you something, I have to compare it with something you know. If I cannot give you a point of reference, what's the meaning of describing anything that goes beyond your experience? You follow, if I tell you, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I name some animal that you don't know, and you say, what, which, which is that animal? And I have to compare that with something you know, because if I, I speak about the unicorn, <laughs> we have been speaking about that these days, unicorns, and the possibility of them about 8,400,000 species, whatever. Okay, you know a horse. So you, I may compare that, okay, there's something like a horse, but with, with one big stuff there. No? <laughs> but if you don't even know what's a horse for some reason, uh, that start to be problematic. And I will ask you, what do you know? A cow. So I will say, okay, a unicorn is not a cow. <laughs> I also know dinosaurs. Okay, a unicorn is not a dinosaur. So I start to describe what the unicorn is by saying what it's not, because that's the only thing you can relate to. 
<laughs> Similarly, Krishna in the Gita starts to say to Arjuna, actually to us as conditioned souls, the soul cannot be burned, cannot be dried, cannot be moistened, cannot be killed, because that's what we experience in the material plane. So all those things are not happening to the soul. But still he's not saying anything about <laughs> what the soul is, interestingly. <laughs> and the very end of his description, he mentions one verse, one verse, he says something about the soul in a positive sense. But it's interesting that whatever he says, he uses the same word three times. And the words ascharyabhat. He says three times, ascharyabhat, ascharyabhat. As you know, in, in our tradition, you will see this in many verses, three times something is repeated. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Go, Lava Matra, Sadhu. Now, these three times repetition means emphasis. So, Ascharya Bhat in this verse by Krishna means basically like wonderful. So, when Krishna gets to say something about the Atma, he says, It's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. And that's what he says. <laughs> Which for us may sound like, okay. <laughs> Thank you for flattering me that way. <laughs> that sounded nice coming from Krishna. No, you're wonderful. Okay, thank you. <laughs> he knows how to rob us. <laughs> but yeah, what, what, what's the meaning of wonderful also? No? Because I mean, that's a word in one sense. And, and we say wonderful to so many things that are not the soul, <laughs> are not that wonderful. <laughs> so, so. Actually, when Krishna is saying you are wonderful three times, actually he's speaking about the potential of the soul. Mm -hmm. Of course, the soul by itself in comparison to matter is wonderful. But in relation to all that the soul can be, that's really for Krishna to have something to be wonderful. I mean, Krishna is <laughs> his Rasik Sekar. You know, he's the highest connoisseur of a spiritual experience. So he wants to use the word wonderful in a cheap way. We may say wonderful to an ice cream or something. <laughs> but Krishna won't say wonderful to something different from bhakti, I will say. Because that's the only experience he has. Krishna is not going outside of the influence of bhakti, of Saruk Shakti. So when he, and, and that's wonderful for him, he says that many times. So if he speaks of the soul as wonderful, He's speaking up the soul's prospect in connection to bhakti, because that's our potential as the Tasta Jivas. And I know this may sound a little tricky, but it's important that we understand this principle. We cannot define something without considering its potential. That's even say was said by Albert Einstein once. So it's not just limited to Gaudiya Vedanta. <laughs> and in science, also they say if you redefine something. You have to define that for what it is and for all that it can be. You have to include all the potential of that particular thing in its definition. So that the same applies to us. We are something, we are Atma, we are the soul, we have these qualities, agency, Satchit, Ananda, and so many things. <clears throat> we are inherently in connection with our source and depending on Krishna in that sense, we are Nitya Krishna Das. But also we have a potential on top of that being Tathasta Jivas. If we associate with bhakti, a particular form of bhakti, that's, that's who we are ultimately. I will say that's how we, we should think about ourselves. We have been touched by bhakti. That mercy has come to our door. Don't ask why. Don't try, don't, don't ask why because you will be end up losing. <laughs> There's no reason, technically speaking, from our side. But Jadrichaya, Bhagavatam uses that term over and over again. Jadrichaya, Bhakti comes out of its own will to us. No, no need to ask, but why are you coming to me? I do not deserve that. And basically, Bhakti will say, that's why I'm coming, <laughs> if you will. So, so a particular type of Bhakti will come and we will be influenced by that. And that will become our eternal prospect in life and all, all that we can be. And that's who we are, all, although we are not there yet in one sense. <laughs> but that prospect has been extended to us. So I will say that in that connection, when we think about ourselves, as, a, as devotees, I don't think we should just think 
I'm a spirit soul. I mean, I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm saying that's not all of the equation. I mean, if you, if you pay attention to our great Vaishnavs and what to speak of liberated personalities, they are not saying we are spirit souls. What Mahaprabhu was saying, well, that's the verse I quoted, I think, two days ago or yesterday. I don't remember any longer when. So Mahaprabhu is not saying, he starts and saying, I'm not Brahman, Kshatra, Vaisu, Sudra. Nahi. <laughs> I'm not uh, Sanyas, Bana, Brahmachari, Grihasta, Bana, Prasta. Nahi, 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 nahi. <laughs> and he doesn't say then. I am a soul. <laughs> He's saying, I'm a servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of Sri Krishna, the beloved of the gopis. So he's presenting a very, on some level, very specific designation. Hmm? He's not saying overtly, I'm Krishna tasting Radha Vav. He's not getting that specific. <laughs> but if you read between the lines, he's saying that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but basically the general idea is, I'm a servant of Krishna. That's what he's saying. So we should think that that's who I am, not only a soul. A soul is a more, of course I'm a soul, <laughs> but what's a soul? What's the potential of the soul to engage in bhakti? And that potential is, has come. I mean, the, the, the elements to activate the potential have come to us. So we should respond to that by seeing ourselves according to that potential. I, I don't think that's to be a sahaja, you know, because someone may say, Oh, you think you are a servant of Krishna, but you are still conditioned soul? I don't think that's necessarily the case. I mean, we, we, of course, we may be conditioned on some level, but we cannot deny Bhakti's presence in our life. No? So we may not be siddhas yet, may not be perfect beings, but we are sadhakas. That's another way of identifying ourselves, who I am. I'm a sadhaka, which means I'm a practitioner of bhakti. I'm someone engaged in sadhana with this particular sadhya in goal in mind, this goal in mind. So that's a whole whole sense of identi identity that, that, that we can entertain that is not uh, 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 unreal. It's not that we are forcing something. That's who we are. I'm a practitioner and I'm having the hope of becoming perfected in this particular practice of becoming a servant of Krishna, a lover of Krishna. On some degree, the ideal has come. I'm enchanted by that. I have accepted that on some level. And then it's just, just a matter of time that it actualizes completely. So I would say it's better that we identify ourselves like that, not so much like, okay, this crazy thought is coming to my mind. You know? I'm a soul, I'm a soul, I'm a soul. I'm, I'm not the mind. I'm not the mind. Yes, I'm not the mind, but I can use my mind in Krishna's service. Uh, that that's much more user friendly than just trying to reject bad stuff and saying I am a soul. On top of that is I am Krishna Das. So if I have mind senses functions, I have to engage them. That's the very definition of bhakti. Use your senses for the pleasure of the master of the senses. Use your mind, and that's the, the, the topmost instruction in the Gita. The final instruction of the Gita is manmana. Manmana means give me your mind, Krishna is saying. Think about me. Not, do not just reject bad thoughts, but smarta vyasat tam vishnur, vishmarta vyana jata chit, sarve vidhidni seda suretayore vakinkara. The essence of all scriptural advice is always think of Krishna and never forget him. So it's not just reject bad stuff in your mind. Try to absorb in Krishna. And naturally, bad stuff will go away. So, so yes, we have a material body, a material mind, but being sadhakas implies our mind, our body, our chitta becomes spiritualized. Nitya siddha krishna prem sadhya kabunai shravanadi suddha chitta karayodhai. So by engaging, this verse is describing sadhana bhakti. By engaging in sadhana and receiving bhakti samskars, devotional impressions in, in sadhu sangha, our chitta, who is the storehouse for all of our material impressions, will become purified 
and not only that, but will be spiritualized. And all our bodies, body, sorry, and senses and mind will become spiritualized. That, that's the idea of bhakti. It's not just reject your body, reject your mind and senses because they are not atma. <laughs> yeah, they are not atma, but bhakti is so potent that can penetrate all the pores of your body and make them spiritual. That's why the body of great personality is put in samadhi and not burned to indicate that body is totally spiritual, no longer, no longer material. And in that same body, that person is serving Mahaprabhu eternally in Nityanavali. So you can see till which point my Guru Master likes to say, okay, on one level we have heard we are not this body and it's, there's a place for that. Or on another level, as sadakas, we can think, I am this body. Because this is a body of a sadaka. So we can identify as a sadaka and, and utilize this body, which means this mind and senses, because the body is made of that, in the service of Krishna. You need to identify it as a sadaka so you can use those things in the service of Krishna. If you are not identified with them, you won't be using them in the service of Krishna. So it's important that we identify with our body. Interesting. That's an interesting twist of events. In the beginning, of course, you are not this body because we are just, we were so engrossed in, in, in living in, in a beast like life. So stop, you are not prophecies, you are not this body. Stop there, please, guys, stop. No more LSD, no more this stuff. You are not that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> red light, stop that. But in time, you realize there's place for thinking, I am this body because this, this body, Prabhupada said, you are not that body, you are not this body. This body means this body, as you think of your body. So when Guru is giving you mantra and, and Kanti Mala and Tilak, your body is no longer that body. Now it's another body, it's Sadaka Deha. Diksha Kale Bhakta Kale Atma Asamarpana. Rupa Goswami said the same thing. Seva Sadaka Rupena Sida Rupena Chatrahe. One of the main, three main verses describing Raga Nuga Bhakti. You have to serve Krishna in your sadhaka deha, with the body of practitioner. So you cannot engage your senses for Krishna's pleasure if you first do not identify with them. If you are just saying, I'm not my mind, I'm not my sense, I'm not my mind, I'm not my senses, you won't be able to offer them to Krishna. So Krishna is saying, please, please, identify, connect with those elements and offer them to me in that sense. If you dedicate your mind and senses to Krishna, in that sense, you are your mind and senses. We are our sadhaka deha. And when you fully play out your sadhaka deha in sadhana, you fully apply yourself in sadhana. Again, that sadhaka deha becomes so spiritualized that technically becomes your eternal body through which you will be serving in eternity. So you can see to which degree this body that in the beginning you are not this body can be, become your body for eternity. That's the power of bhakti in between. <laughs> you are not this body, but, but with bhakti in the equation, that can be your body for eternity. Well, that's why we have all the pictures of our acharyas on the altar. The altar represents a portal into eternity. So those pictures represent, they are already, they are in eternity in those bodies serving there. <laughs> so, so yeah, bhakti is pretty user-friendly, as we like to say. No, it's not that we need to reject anything, but to, as you mentioned, this verse from the Bhagavad, bhakti parishanu bhava virakti ranjatra chaisya trikka ekka kala pratpadi manasya jatasna tushti pushti shudapa yono gasham. Today I was just studying that verse also in, in Bhakti Sandarva, Yuga Goswami concludes the whole treatise with that verse, with verse from the Bhagavad, which says, like the same way that someone who is hungry when eating will experience simultaneously three things. You know, will experience some taste, some uh, like stomach feeling, feeling, not, not that feeling, but the stomach is filled. <laughs> Satisfaction, thank you. And eradication of hunger at the same time. So similarly, there are different interpretations of the verse, but someone who, 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 who go through bhakti will experience prem, We'll experience darshan of Bhagavan, Parishanu Bhav, and will be rakti, which means detachment. Because of the other things. In the same way, because of eating, you no longer have hunger. That comes like a byproduct. 
So similarly, by, by engaging in, in the positive, if you will, side of bhakti, which is positive, all is positive, <laughs> naturally all these other things will, will, will come. Hmm? So personally, I find that much, at least in thinking in my own, how I'm trying to deal with my own mind, if you will, <laughs> it's, it's not so much about like type of denial process, but just how do I become more skilled, skilled in, in using this? Because I mean, as we were speaking the other day, sometimes in order to see our brightest potential, it may be useful to, to glimpse at our darkest potential. <laughs> So it, I don't think it's very difficult to think where our mind can take us in, in the dark side. We know which are those sections. And we only know one level of that. You can always get darker and darker. <laughs> we don't want to, do, to go there. That's enough. It's enough dark. So you see, okay, my mind has such a potential of penetrating to darkness. If you will. Now, just if I use that same potential and power of penetration into another direction where my mind can take me. And that can be such a vehicle. So, so that's the idea, trying to think in those terms, how can I maximize the, the, all that my mind can offer so that can facilitate my ultimate goal? So it's not effective for me to try and think about the senses that other little spiritual spark has. It, it's not effective for me to try to think about the the senses of that spiritual spark who is the soul has mm -hmm. like it, it feels like it's so separate i mean the this the art because the, it it's not using those senses or the only way it can be used right now is to the side of the to this body is that how it is? technically speaking the, the atma doesn't have senses oh that's okay that's what i wonder yeah it is described in shastra that the atma needs a particular body to express itself, if you will, whether it be a material body or a spiritual body. Hmm? So now we have, we are materially embodied. So we have senses, mind, through which the Atma can express itself, if you will. And if that's done properly in connection with Bhakti in this case, the senses and, ma and body and Chitta, this particular body, can get spiritualized totally. So, this, that, so being a spark of spiritual energy with consciousness, but that's why it's going to help you have senses that you don't have a form. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're just a conscious entity and it's, some, it's expressing itself now to this medium. Mm -hmm. And that's what you said. Your most effective way is just to, you know, serve another Krishna and this is what I have yeah. to use to serve. Yeah, and eventually the more this general idea, because it's still to say I'm a servant of Krishna is a general idea. It's not like the the ultimate identity. I mean, there's so much detail of that, as I like to say to the devotees sometimes, and our process is so specific. No? Because if I ask you, what's the goal of life? Even, I'm not asking you, who are you ultimately? Uh, but what's the goal of life? Someone may tell, well, what, what, Krishna Prem. Okay. So that's, that's somewhere, that's a specific. So I may ask, which type of Prem for which form of Krishna? Because Krishna, there is Krishna Vrindavan, Krishna Mathura, Krishna Dwarka. There are so many types of Prem in relation to all these many types of Krishna. So that's still Krishna Prem is a generic idea. No? Of course, that's something. You know, for most people, what's the goal of life? I don't want to hear what they have to tell. <laughs> so to say Krishna Prem, that's a long way. <laughs> but still, there is something more. No? And you may say, okay, Krishna Prem means Prem for Krishna Vrindavan. Okay, which type of Prem? Sakya Prem, Dasya Prem, Batsalya Prem, Madhurya Prem, or Madhurya Prem. Okay, what's, which type of Madhurya Prem? Parakya Bhav, Swakya Bhav, or Parakya Bhav. Okay, which type of Parakya Bhav? That, that Bhavichatmika, Sambhogi, Chamai, direct union with Krishna, or serving this, the Naika who has direct union with him? The, the, the last one. Of course, this doesn't happen like this. It's not like, like you go to the supermarket and give me one. Or a kiabab, and I will. I want to taste that. It's, it's not like that. It comes by sadhusan. But my point is, so again, okay, I want to serve under Sri Radha's guidance, Manjari Baba, whatever. The, okay, under the, the group of which Yuteshwari, which group leader. And my point is, there are so many further details that eventually have to be figured out or revealed. 
so we can, okay, now this is who I am in every single sense of the term. So that will gradually be manifested with the corresponding identity in the brush and body and, and color, sorry, color or <laughs> doughty color, depending the case. I mean, there's so much, my point is degree of specificity that eventually will be revealed, but yeah, at least we have to begin with this general, uh, um, general, okay, not Flat coming the word, sorry? Flat. Yeah, this general idea of I'm a servant of Krishna, I'm a sadhaka, I have the chance of engaging my mind and senses in the service of Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas, and with this understanding and faith, the more I apply myself to sadhana in this way, the more gradually everything will become even more and more clear, who I am in every sense. But the point is, if I already know I'm a disciple of my Gurudev, and I'm not doing all that I could do regarding that sense of identity, <laughs> I shouldn't be asking it further than that, because I won't get any answers. The answer will be just, I mean, be fully a servant first. No, I mean, if, you are, if I'm give, being a 60% disciple and I ask Krishna, which is my Siga Deha and Vrindavan, he will, he, you will hear the wind replying back to you. Like there's still 40% remaining in Guru Seva. No. <laughs> so we, we, all should, we should also have this type of like integrity, no? honesty, okay. And implicit faith that of course everything will come by the mercy of Bhagavan, by the Achintya Shakti of Srinam, we should we should educate our faith and have full faith in all the things. That, that's an important part that we have to do. Educate our faith on the basis of Shastra, Shastriya Shad, and have intense faith on this thing, not, not in a dogmatic way, but on the basis of revelation and experience. And then apply ourselves accordingly. <clears throat> and the result has to come. Shastra is saying, has to come. If it's not happening, if it's not happening, you are doing something wrong. Like this example, if you're hungry and you eat, I mean, it has to come. You, you have to stop being hungry at one point. If you're eating after an hour and still you are hungry, I mean, you are Bhima or something like that. Well, today is his day. Bhima Kalsi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in general, it has to, the, the, the hunger has to stop because you are eating. in the. But hopefully if you are eating in the proper place, of course, if you try to put the food in your ear, it's not happening, Mara. If I'm trying to eat and I'm still hungry, oh, but the food goes here. Oh, okay. It's not happening. But what you are eating? A piece of wood. No, that's not food. This is food. Okay. Oh, now it's, now it's working. <laughs> so the same thing with bhakti. It will work, but you have to put the food, the proper food in the proper hole, if you will. <laughs> because if it's not, if not, we'll feel, oh, nothing is happening with my bhakti. It's not that it's bhakti's fault. <laughs> You just you are being invited to be introspective and think what I may be doing wrong here because bhakti is perfect. So what I may be doing wrong, maybe I'm chanting inattentively, I'm engaging in some apparat and being complacent. I mean, it's an invitation for as one person says in Argentina, brutal honesty. <laughs> That's what it means to be a sadhaka. No? Yeah, be not money. I once had this conversation privately with Kribari Swami. Which and conversation? I was, well, I'm talking about Siddha uh -huh. stuff, and I was speculating, and he just stopped me. He said, stop. <laughs> he said, focus on Dasya to Mahaprabhu. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of his classical points, which, of course, I appreciate, no? Because, yeah, our entry point to Braja Lila is Gaur Lila. So the, the question is what we are doing about Gaur Lila, how much we are taking advantage of that, how much we are understanding that. No, these days we have been speaking about Gaur Lila some some days ago, and hopefully we we have had some glimpses. I had <laughs> of oh all that Gaur Lila is and more. So the point is that it's not just to take for granted. Oh, Gaur Lila is just like entry ticket and then go. Let's go to the real goal. No, no, no. And again, Gaur Lila entails my relationship with Sri Gurudev, me as a sissy, as a disciple, how do I apply myself in Dasya towards Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas? Sometimes we want to skip the chapter and want the Madhurya experience this whatever quickly if Raj, but all the experiences in Raj are, 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 are sustained on, on a foundation of Dasya. Uh, 
uh, of divine slavery in the words of Srila Siddhar Maharaj. Everyone has that disposition there. So if you don't pass first that test, don't go for the PhD, if you will. No. <laughs> first you have to, to prove yourself worthy in the eyes of Mahaprabhu, if you will, in the eyes of Bhakta Brinda or Bhakta Brinda. So, yeah, my hope Guru Maharaj likes to say that. He says that if you get initiation and someone asks you, so did you receive a Siddha Deha? And you can reply, well, I received a Sadaka Deha. Is that too little? <laughs> and my Guru Maharaj will say, the more you apply yourself in your Sadaka Deha, naturally the Siddha Deha will come. You don't, you don't need a separate process to attain that. I mean, Siddha Deha will come as a result of proper use, use of Sadaka Deha, of doing what, all that you can do with what you have now. <laughs> because sometimes we enter into this idea that, well, I'm missing something. I would like to get that and maybe going here. But maybe what you are missing is you are not doing all that you can do what you what, with what you have at present. That's a real question we should be having for doing with ourselves before asking, maybe I should go here and there and take this and that. But the question is, with whatever you have now, today, Friday, whatever, June 10th, <laughs> whatever day may be, are you doing all that you can do with that or, or you're not taking full advantage of that? If you realize, no, I could do it better. So as my guru said, stop, <laughs> stop there. <laughs> and try to take, yeah, full advantage of the gift that already came because it's a form of ungratefulness, if not. Krishna is giving something with a certain potential. We are not taking full advantage and we are asking more. Krishna, a little bit more. And Krishna will say, but I already sent you more. You are not seeing that. And, and, and for sure, if he sends us more, probably at five minutes after, there are, Krishna, send me more. <laughs> because we have not learned to, to take advantage. So it's this idea of costless mercy and praying for mercy is a fine line. We can end up in abuse. On just more, more, and give me, give me. And but we are not doing anything or not too much with what he's sending. So it's we can ask for mercy so we can take advantage of the mercy that already came <laughs> instead of thinking something is missing. Yeah, something is missing myself doing my right part. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, Gorlila is, can give everything. Harinam can give everything, technically speaking. When someone asks, see Gorky Short at Babaji Maharaj, can you give me, can you reveal to me my Siddha Deha? And Babaji Maharaj said, that, in, that information is residing between the syllables of the holy name. <laughs> like implying, if your chanting has not revealed that to you, keep chanting. <laughs> you're, not, you're not chanting totally purely yet. And that's, that's a big point. I mean, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj will make that point over and over and over again. <laughs> Oh, he will, some devotees will go with these ideas like I, something is missing I lack, I want more, I want the real thing or whatever and he'll say, Baba please try to chant Sudanam are you chanting Sudanam? are you avoiding all uh, apparatus Srinam? of course coming from someone like him who's really chanting Sudanam who is the personification of humility I mean, it will really touch your heart he was asking Sudan, try to chant the pure name and try to understand how everything you feel it's missing will come from that. But if you are not doing all that you can to chant the pure name, please do not, do not come with this list of questions. Try to do your homework. <laughs> and of course, get the association that will inspire you to chant the pure name, get properly educated to chant the pure name. <laughs> it all converges in try to chant the pure name and everything will reveal from that Chintamani, Nam Chintamani Krishnas. So we need, yes, sadhu, sangha, so many things. So when we sit to chant, everything happens by that. <laughs> of course, Prabhupada said, chant and be happy, and, and he was correct, but for that formula to work, we need to have certain sangha, and certain shravan, and certain nourishing. So we will chant from a certain place that will bring the nectar, if you will. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, that's... That's a fact. I mean, it's important to 
to not cheat ourselves in this connection. You know? Because if not, we may just always think, I need something more, and I think not something more. And we may be going to so many places and getting so many things. <laughs> and you will always still feeling there's something missing. Because again, the thing that is missing is this thing that was missing from the very beginning. <laughs> And you are not, we are not accepting that and running here and there. It's a similar thing that what we do in, in the material experience. We are feeling something is missing and trying to fill that existential hole with money, sense enjoyment and power, whatever. It's not working, something missing. And then we may think, okay, we'll hear from this side, well, we'll get this and we'll read this, I will go there and we'll re still something missing because, yeah, we may not be doing our homework. <laughs> Simple as that, no? so yeah. Thank oh, thank you. So, seven thirty. We are right on time on the legal Tatasta line. So we can finish here. I, I don't know if there are any one last question before finishing. There are very burning questions that won't allow you to have good resting yeah. tonight. <laughs> So I was thinking about, uh, yes. It's always interesting to me, and I, I can never really figure it out why this um, excessive need to know this in death. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, uh, because if you found out who you ever were, it's really no different than chanting because that's the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. So I can't figure out why this, you know, excitement. Mm. Mm. Yeah, of course, I, I couldn't tell in, in general because in every case there may be some particular background that takes yeah. some people to, oh, I would like to know this for one reason, another for this reason, and and, 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 and some reasons, yeah, this is not the, the, the deeper reasons, no? the, the deepest of reasons that why they want to know that. Yes. Actually, it's not the fact of wanting to know, but basically the, the, the real idea will be I want to serve Krishna in such a way that there has to be a naturally corresponding identity for that to happen. So instead of wanting to know certain details about that, is wanting to know how I developed the proper mood of service that naturally will be, bring forth a Siddha Deha, that it will be necessary for that to happen. Yeah. But of course, this is not like a, we are not in a rush like to get there as soon as possible, like, like a price. Okay, I got my, my Sida Deha. Do you have your Sida Deha not? Oh, I got mine, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that type of, of game yeah, because... That's what I'm talking about because you bring up a good point though, about you know, to have a certain thing, like you want to say, um, may Krishna's noontime lunch. Mm. That's all you think about. Mm. I mean, for me, that's very advanced mm. in you know the way I live in this world. So I can understand that, but I don't know how many people are at that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to actually make that connection. Mm. To be honest, generally not many people. I mean, generally, Krishna himself is saying that, no, in the Gita, Manushyanam, Sahasrasu, for many people, only a few ones mm -hmm. are looking transcendence from those. Only a few ones attain perfection from those. A few ones get to know me. No, so he, he's making the point. This is not a cheap thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a goal for all, but it doesn't mean that we will attain that like right now or tomorrow or in this lifetime even, mm -hmm. which is shouldn't be a problem because again, if we are already on the path and, and we have faith in the path and mercy is coming. It's just a matter of time. It may take one mm -hmm. lifetime, two lifetimes, I mean, no problem. We, we are not, if we are doing what we are doing in Bhakti from the, in the correct place, we don't want to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we should be so happy and satisfied with what we are doing. <laughs> it's no, not that, no? You're hungry, yeah. You're yeah. You're so, uh, yeah. And, but Jiva Goswami in that verse gave the point interestingly because he's, that's an analogy, you know, the one of eating. So he said, when you eat, and they are satisfied, you cannot continue eating. No, you no, have to I stop. Can. But in... <laughs> <laughs> there are exceptions to the rule. Not <laughs> but, <laughs> but Jiva Goswami's point is, 
at some point you have to stop eating at some point <laughs> but he says with bhakti you can continue forever it's not that i'm satisfied no more bhakti please yeah. the more satisfied you are the more bhakti you, you embrace so yeah yeah exactly so the point is if you are doing that from the proper place you are not even thinking about where to go or i need because you are you are finding everything there yeah. and by being in by behaving in that way everything else will come in time and the devotee shouldn't be like calculating like when to see the day how when will because you are really having such a good time serving if you will. <laughs> once you let see that Maharaj say that you no know? some devotees were asking him too many questions like like this and he said but but bhakti is such a nice thing mm -hmm. He was that was his reply. <laughs> but, but but bhakti is such a nice thing. Why, why are you why are you so concerned about getting out of this world and transcending samsara or getting this or that? If if that's such a great thing and you have the chance of doing that now, why are you giving place in your mind to some other thing, which is I mean, just focusing how nice bhakti is mm -hmm. and everything will come from that. I think also like uh, the Buddhists on that level. They're so absorbed in their service. They don't need to have time to mm -hmm. other than that specifically that service mm -hmm. in order to do it mm -hmm. in a way that is pleasing to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So they are fully satisfied mm -hmm. in that sense. Of course they have aspirations, as mm -hmm. you say. There's never an end to increasing mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it's a little bit more authentic, natural, and, you know, just kind of grows yeah. it has to be uncontainable like you are doing mm -hmm. your homework so nicely that the fruits of that will come in a way that yeah. you cannot resist even if you want to resist you cannot and then, like, put it like that like, pour it out to other people. Mm -hmm. that so will over, overflow you, overflow you mm -hmm. yeah that people. was Mahaprabhu's example yeah. and I mean, he, he will chant in such a way yeah. That my Guru Mas likes to say, some people will say, Mahaprabhu, ordinary people say he was an epileptic, yeah. mm -hmm. not his seizures. Yeah. But my Guru Mas will say, but epilepsy is not contagious. Mm -hmm. But what Mahaprabhu did was contagious. Mm -hmm. no? He was like overflowing, sprinkling everyone, and just seeing him was like mm -hmm. transforming everyone no? because he was practicing so nicely, if you will, <laughs> that that created everything else. And eventually we see what happened with. Mahaprabhu's, I mean, he's, of course, Bhagavan himself, but somehow he's given an example of stages in the life of a practitioner mm -hmm. on a pretty extraordinary level, but nonetheless, he's pra practicing, chanting, doing Harinam Sankirtan in the streets, being a public person, preaching, but he's doing all that in such a nice way. What's the result of that? Eventually, he enters into Gambira, mm -hmm. and he, he's absorbed into his inner world. You know? mm -hmm. So my point is, Similarly, as Sadaka should practice in a way that at one point his inner, her inner absorption will become so capturing that that person may be 24 hours thinking how to prepare lunch for Krishna, basically. Uh -huh. you know, automatically, you know, it will just, it will happen. I mean, what else can it be? Mm -hmm. The goal is to, mm -hmm. to be a full servant of Krishna. So what else can happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we have you, we should have that full trust also, no? Because sometimes I hear devotees thinking, Maharaj, I have to try to do it." As some, someone wrote me to me the other day, like from Colombia, Maharaj. Someone read my hands or something some years ago and told me that I won't live longer, and, and this person is still young, and told me, and, and I just met the devotees, mm -hmm. so I know that I only have like whatever ten years or something. <laughs> It was from a good place, no, and I want to really take it seriously and attain the goal in my life. And I was internally thinking, 10 years only, I, I don't know if you will make it. <laughs> I mean, you seem pretty serious, but I tried to make the point to her, do not be concerned about like calculating. I know I don't know if I will make it in 10 years, or probably you may not even die in 10 years. Uh, and and if, even if you do so, if you are serious about practicing, you have to have full faith that Krishna will protect you and, and, and will grant you further opportunities of serving him in, in the next situation. It's not that you will be born as a pig 
in Patala Loka or something. No? Oh, I will lose my human life, form of life. I mean, if you really want to serve Krishna, do you think Krishna is that cruel that will... No, no, no. Animal... I mean, if you really want that, he's making that promise over and over again in Shastra. Declare that my devotee never perishes. In this process, there is no loss or diminution. All these like, assurances like I provide my devotee what he needs. I, I give what he lacks. I, I keep. So Krishna is trying to say to us, just engage in bhakti <laughs> nicely. I do the I will do the whole other part. You do your part, and you trust that I'm doing my job. No, that's one of the aspects of of Charanagati. One the main aspects of surrender is to have full faith. Krishna will protect me. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, that person, um, the way Krishna could show the mercy to that person is that what they did in 10 years might be equal to 20 years mm -hmm. because they would have been so serious mm. and didn't yeah, waste yeah. any time, mm. which is uh, something, you know, that uh, is yeah. so important. Yeah, yeah, we can, of course, calculate. Uh, what I, actually, when Pariksit Maharaj went to Sukadev Goswami and we know he, he didn't have him in 20 years or anything. He had one week. <laughs> and he knew he had one week. <laughs> in this case, it was not just some fuzzy hand reading. I mean, it was a Brahmin's course. It will happen. And he asked Sukadev Goswami, I have one week and I'm really serious about attaining your ultimate goal. And he was really serious. We spoke the other day about Parikshit, his very name, is the examiner. And he was really... And he asked Sukadev Goswami, I have only one week. Is that enough? <laughs> and Sukadev Goswami kind of chuckled and said, like, one week? That's a lot. One second, probably. Yeah. Only one second of proper focus and absorption. Mm -hmm. It's not about quantity, but quality. Mm -hmm. Only once chanting Sudanam, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhiho, only one millisecond of Sadhu Sangha, mm -hmm. all perfection. Mm -hmm. So, in potential, that can happen in a moment. In practice, it may not happen that quickly because of some other things, but, but there is place for that. And Krishna can give some extraordinary mercy. And, yeah. and we know he's extraordinarily merciful. So <laughs> that's our hope also. Now, he's not like a cruel guy on the cloud, like just throwing thunderbolts to everyone or something. No? He's, <laughs> he's a loving thunderbolt. <laughs> Uh, because uh, because she knows what we need. Yeah. And that's not always easy, as Arjun knows in her work, how hard they just must accept, isn't it? Very hard to accept. Uh, difficulties and thunderbolts. Yeah. Especially if they go for a long time. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has, yeah, our own, for yeah. sure, journey to share. And, but I'm sure that all of you Try, we try our best not to fall into like victim consciousness and Krishna is the one to blame. But although as hard as it may be, and, and I'm sure all of us can, I mean, I can tell you so many horror oh. movies that I have to go through. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, I'm from the bigger picture. You always realize this was the best possible thing that could happen to me. In the moment, I think this is the worst thing. But, but in, in theory, at least I should know. No, no, no. Although I feel like this, I know there's a bigger picture and I have to be patient. Utsaha nishcaya dairat, like Prabhupada will say, no? Utsaha, be enthusiastic. Upadashambrita, third verse. And one may say, yeah, but I cannot just be enthusiastic. Like, okay, I will be enthusiastic today. I'm trying, but it's not working. So nishcaya, no? Second, second verse is like, try to make some effort no? with confidence, with faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And you may say, I'm trying, but it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, right. So the third word is dhairiyat, which means patience. patience. <laughs> no? Some oh, patience. Okay. I, I, sometimes it's not easy to be patient. No? But Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta will say, through patience, when, when we exhibit patience in front of the arrangement that Krishna is making in our life, mm -hmm. that's one of the main ways we are showing our faith to him. Yeah. And we are telling to him, 
I trust you. Mm -hmm. Although I don't have a clue what, why you are doing this, or what's <laughs> taking place, and when it will end, I will like, but it's not ending. At the end, I, I, I want to have unconditional trust because looking back, I know that it always, you are always doing the right thing. Yeah, is that the intelligence <laughs> or the mind? The, Sorry again? Is that the intelligence? Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Intelligence have to do with this, yeah, proper discrimination and proper determination. Mm -hmm. So patience is a form of, yeah. of determination because yeah. you need to really be determined, okay, and, and, and just not waiting. No, patience is not like a passive thing of, okay, I have to wait till, <laughs> till this ends. But because we may think like that, no, like, or I have to tolerate. Okay, I have to tolerate. I have to be tolerant. And like, it's over? Not yet. Okay, I have to tolerate. <laughs> Krishna, let me know when it's over so I have to stop doing this stuff. But it's, that's not the type of tolerance that Mahaprabhu is asking. This is try to, to learn in the process of waiting, mm -hmm. not try to learn the process of tolerating because, and, and the concept of tolerating, try to, to give yourself. Now he gives the example of the tree, you know, which is unique. But you know, Thakur translates Tarura Pisa as pure compassion free from envy. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't say tolerance. Because why? Because the tree is mostly giving <laughs> while, while tolerating. Mm -hmm. It's tolerating heat, cold, rain, someone who didn't find a closed restroom and is urinating on the tree. <laughs> but the tree is giving shade, air, fruit, shelter, uh, giving, 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 giving. Giving so much that at one point the tree forgot, oh, I'm tolerating this guy urinating on me. At one point you are so absorbed in giving that you don't feel any longer that you have to tolerate. Of course, we cannot imitate that, but we should know, we should get to that point where and we know that's happening. Some things we feel, oh, I have to tolerate this situation or this person. But some other person is not feeling that. It's not feeling, I have to tolerate. So actually, the question is, actually, do I have to tolerate the person or the situation or something in me yeah. <laughs> that is making me see the situation as something that I have to tolerate? Mm -hmm. And if it's something in me, then I have to conclude, oh, then others have to tolerate me having that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no? Like we did, the, I, so Guru Nista made a joke recently with that idea that the ones I made in the class that, that you have Paramatma wow. <laughs> and after a few lifetimes, Paramatma is leaving some message that, oh, I'm tired of this guy. I mean, oh, too, too much tolerance. No, I'm leaving. Find someone else there. We know that's not happening. No? So the point is so much tolerance they are tolerating us so much, so we should find some some impetus for tolerating ourselves, no? And again, tolerating with hope, not be not like complaining, not like this is too much. But tate nu kampam shushamikshamano, this famous verse from the Bhagavatam. What tolerating, trusting in Krishna's mercy, and and even thinking, if I wouldn't if I wouldn't be practicing bhakti whatever is coming will be much worse. Yeah. But I, ha I have bhakti in my life, so I can deal with this in a very different way. So actually Krishna is so merciful that if he's, I should be receiving this situation because of my past misdeeds, but actually Krishna is so merciful that he's sending me this. Although still I feel it like this, <laughs> I should know it's, it's just a very specific, and he's sending it in such a way that I can get closer to him, I get detached from certain things, whatever I need in that particular moment. No, Krishna says in the Bhagavad and just Yahramanu Grinami Tadhanai Tadhanai Swasanai well anyhow I forgot one word. But he's basically saying uh, to those who I want to be merciful with, I gradually deprive them from all the wealth. And the idea of wealth here is, doesn't mean necessarily money, but means those things we consider they are valuable mm -hmm. and we are attached to. Someone may think that's money, someone may think that's fame, someone may think that's a car. And Krishna will, he says, Shana is Shana. He says, gradually doing that. So also he's saying, I'm not such a beast that takes everything and the person goes neurotic and leaves me. I will do it in a way that they can sustain. I will pinch them <laughs> with love. <laughs> But also take that in a level that they, they can, it may sound too much, but it's not actually too much. It's not impossible to pass the test. As, as I like to put it, 
on this extreme we have easy on this extreme we have impossible in the mid in the mid path is difficult mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mid middle midpoint is not easy easy is extreme impossible is another extreme we don't want either of those if something is impossible we'd get discouraged oh i never passed the test i cannot do it this is not for me if it's too easy we get bored <laughs> no. but if it's difficult that's the just right level of challenge that i need to change and to go out of my comfort zone being lovingly pinched <laughs> so krishna knows the dose that, that we can survive through <laughs> so we have that implicit trust he knows actually better than me what do i need i don't have that that much that clear but he knows so i have to develop that unconditional implicit faith uh, and again it's not easy i'm not saying easy i'm not using the word easy <laughs> but that's not impossible either <laughs> even though it sounds impossible sometimes oh it's impossible no it's difficult it's impossible if you don't surrender to krishna a little bit more <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's why krishna is sending you that situation mm -hmm. so you realize i cannot do handle this myself so try to surrender a little bit more than before and then it becomes possible so we have to see the thunderbolts of destroying our prison. So we have to see what? The thunderbolts that are coming and destroying our prison rather than... Prison. I mean, yeah. our, our, our yeah. entanglement. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That is destroying that structure that's... Yeah. I mean, sometimes the gurus describe us, no? Like harder, harder than a thunderbolt and oh, softer yeah. like the lotus or something. The so the rose. So the, the idea is there. Okay, there is, can be a thunderbolt. But the rose is there also, no? And rose implies affectionate, tender person, good, well wishing. So even if it takes the form of a thunderbolt, and I think like, my gosh, it's killing me. But if you remember, but this is a person who loves me the most. So that makes that puts everything in a whole different context. <laughs> and, and the person who loves me the most sometimes will speak hard, hard to us because because they love us. And because they see all that we can be and we are not doing that or because they see that we are walking to some <laughs> cliff and they have to stop that and they will just like, ah, and we say, why do you spoke like this? <laughs> and the person says, because I love you. Binding Krishna because she felt like she had to teach him. Yeah, that was out of love. You no, know, She was not a dysfunctional mother <laughs> that wanted to tie her son to a... No, so of course, of course, the person has to be really our well wish, or we shouldn't like tolerate thunderbolts that are not coming from the heart. That's a separate thing, and sometimes we may have done that, and it's dysfunctional. Yeah. But when we, That's why we have <laughs> yeah, no one's going to win. Yeah, the thunderbolt discerner. And so, yeah, it's but but when it's coming from a place of real affection, trust. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a thunderbolt or, or a rose petal. Yeah. No, Srila Prabhupada will say, if the guru is caressing the disciple or slapping him, in both cases, he's giving his mercy. Yeah. We shouldn't create a, like a difference in our yeah. mind. I like the, the caress. I, I, like the low, I like the rose petal, not the thunderbolt. <laughs> but sometimes you need the thunderbolt. Okay. You, you, you don't get the lesson with the rose petal. So, I don't get it. I don't get it. If I get hit with a thunderbolt, then I might wake up. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're not the only one who needs that treatment. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> but it's really it's so true. I'm talking to someone before, I'm sitting there also, that I could have never n understood that I could be here today. And it's only because all of those difficulties, some thunderbolts, came into my life. Because we don't ask for them. We don't want them. But we need yeah. them. We need them. Yeah, I don't wait a minute. Do not speak very loudly because <laughs> the roof may open. Do <laughs> you think that's true? What? What we were just talking about the roof might open, so we're going to hear me if you start talking like that. I mean, maybe I mean, not I literally, have... but. No, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was in Costa Rica. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And, you know, there are some powerful thunderbolts. There. Oh, the scorpions. I mean, oh, okay. I haven't even seen a scorpion. Oh. 
And somehow in my mind, it was the next to last night there. Mm. And I said, okay, Krishna, bring it on. Oh, you said that? <laughs> oh, Shivati. And I lifted up my feet that night before I got into bed, and there I was. And the relation is reciprocal. So. And then, was like, <laughs> then there was a huge spider an hour later, then the next night there was another scorpion. I'm like, oh my God. Shut up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we, we should also be, I mean, I, I, I don't want to say with this, be careful what you ask to Krishna, but sometimes we may, yeah, <laughs> be careful in the sense of, not, not because Krishna is, is bad, but just you may be asking something you are not able to deal with yet. And without good intent, with good intention, with being naive, you may say like, I remember my first Janmashtami, first Janmashtami, I mean, total naive. No, first days with the devotee and we just want to control your senses in a weekend so the devotee told me okay in this janmashtami uh, we are fasting until midnight and that was the first thing they told me <laughs> well, but this is a good day to, uh, to pray to the deity and, and, and beg ask for some blessing or something so I went to the deity of Mahaprabhu with all my kanishta naivete if you will <laughs> and I asked okay Mahaprabhu, I like to con I, I, I want to control my senses fully. Now, and my idea was like, okay, I will make this prayer and and, and will happen. And it happens. I mean, the re the prayer was replied. It happened not in the form of controlling my senses, but of realizing how little control of my senses I have. And that happened when at midnight, when there was 108 preparations. And I prayed some hours ago, I want to control my sense after, I mean, and I, I even forgot about what I prayed some hours ago, you know, after eating, or, 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 and they're like, oh, but I pray to control my senses. And so my point was, Krishna replied in the form of sending a situation to, to, to put me, in, to see how much do I actually want that or can. And then I realized, yeah, this is not a joke. So I, when I pray, and I have to be realistic in what I'm asking, because we have so many prayers for great devotees, but how much you can, like, repeat those prayers and make yeah. them your own. I mean, yeah. if, if, if you are not there, that may be even dysfunctional yeah. or yeah. evasive. Yeah. You mentioned so. that when you were talking about disciples finding guru, what kind of disciple are you? Are you ready for that? So are you ready for these prayers, really? And it seems like, you know, that, you know very rarely, mm. you know, as much as you'd like to just do that, mm. but when it actually hits you, mm. when you actually have to go through that difficulty, mm. it's like, oh boy, what was I thinking? Mm. Really, what was I thinking? Mm. I'm so not at that level. Because when it comes, it just... But it's important, no? Even if the whole situation helped to show where I'm at at present, yeah. that's important that's to, to have a clearer... Yeah. I had a, an idea of that, and now I'm having a more clear vision. Where I'm actually at. <laughs> well, that's so. the first five minutes, but then you know the rest of the time you actually have to go through it. Mm -hmm. Particularly if it's a, it's a really deep relationship breakup or a health issue, mm -hmm. or, you know, a financial destruction. Mm -hmm. You know, after living in certain ways, you know, it's it's like an earthquake. Oh yeah. It shakes up everything, and you're just standing there. You know? Mm -hmm. I oftentimes think, wow, these people that are refugees and everything mm -hmm. is taken away from mm -hmm. them and they're just mm -hmm. standing there in the mud with their kids, just like, I, I can't imagine even mm -hmm. being anywhere near that. I mean, maybe if I was there, I could scoop out a picture or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the end of the day, well, whatever I'm, I am going through or each of us, that's for a very unique reason why I'm going through that particular situation and not a refugee there or a multimillionaire there and, and I'm in this unique specific mm -hmm. I always remember Victor Frankl in, in the man of search of meaning yeah in, in, the, in the holocaust camp mm -hmm. and the only way he could survive the horror was to find purpose in that experience that okay for some particular reason that I don't know don't know yet God wants me to be in this unique experience myself not any other but myself and I have find purpose in going through that, embracing my, yeah. you know, whatever is, is in, unfolding yeah. in front of me. And eventually, of course, so much came from that. So much. 
but we have to have this like unconditional he will say reality has some unconditional purpose mm -hmm. we have to have this trust reality possesses unconditional meaning and purpose we have to trust that when, when you lose faith in that yeah. they are over and that was, you know, like, okay, mm -hmm. you went from that mm -hmm. point. You have to be in somewhere. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. So, thank you so much. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Have hope, please. <laughs> thank you so much for your time thank and you company and questions and topics. And we will continue sharing more informally now. With some Prashad and the Kadasi Prashad, Shila Guru Dev Ki Jai, Shriman Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Ji Ki Jai, Sri Sri Krishna Valaram Ki Jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Primananda Ri, Vancha Kalpata Rubya Shakri Pasi Dhukhe Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Pio Vaishnava Vajanamona, Anam Takoti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai, Sri Kalsi Ki Jai, Gaur Hari. Let's see if